Hello and welcome back. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you were trying to display your revenue by state on the map and instead of showing your state somewhere in the United States or in Europe, all of a sudden your state shows up in Brazil or in Africa? If the answer is yes, then this video is for you as I will try to explore some options that we can use in order to get rid of this annoying little problem. Now, you're probably asking yourself, if you are going to be talking about maps, why are we looking at this DAX sample model page on Power BI documentation? Well, what's interesting is that as I was looking for some DAX information on dates and period function, I found that there is now a DAX sample model, and then if you follow this link, you will land on this page, and that's DAX sample model is a Power BI desktop file built on top of pretty well-known AdventureWorks data warehousing sample. So I figured, hey, let's take a look at what Microsoft is thinking uh, would be a good model for us to learn Power BI because obviously if they're putting that model as a reference for some of these functions, that's got to be a well-designed, good reference model for us to use. So I followed the link and here I found this model, I downloaded and then I spent a little bit of time on exploring it. Now, if you go ahead and download that model, and I will put all the links in the description of this video, then you will see that this is a pretty bare bone model. It uh, literally just comes with the data in it. Uh, doesn't seem like there are any measures in this model. And uh, there's a couple of things here that raise my eyebrows with respect to the uh, star schema design of this model. By the way, I don't know if it's cool, I don't know if you'd be interested. I'm thinking to start a new type of videos where I kind of take a look at either uh, visualizations or models and do some critiquing, talk about what I like and what I don't like in a particular design and or report. If you think that that would be of value, please let me know. Now, I realize that that's a pretty mean to do, to criti criticize somebody else's design. But here's the thing, in our trade, the only way to learn is by practicing it ourselves. And the problem is if you're pretty early in your uh, BI development career, you simply do not have a lot of at-bats. You simply have not had a chance to work on a lot of different models. So on one hand, I don't try to be mean, but maybe this would be pretty useful for somebody who's uh, a novice and getting that sort of critique would be a good learning tool. Anyway, other than the very questionable star schema design for a sales and sale order type of use case, let's take a look at how well the mapping feature works in this data set. As you probably know, in Power BI, it's very easy to start a map. All you need to do is drag a geo attribute of your data on the canvas. So here I'm dragging country region. And as you can see, we only have a handful of countries in our data set, Canada, US, UK, France, Germany, and Australia. So just a handful of countries. The reason this works is because we can click on our attribute and then go to data category and make sure that we properly tag it as a country, state, and so forth. So as we can see for country, this works very well. Let's see if this works as well when we try to drag a state. So I have added a sales amount to our bubble size so that it's a little bit more interesting. So let's take out country region and add state province and see what happens. All of a sudden we see a bubble in the middle of Africa and if I mouse over it says Nord and sales amount. So how do I know whether this geocoding works? Well what I could do is I could take my country region, drag it into tooltip and then mouse over and then it says that this is state and province Nord, country region is France, but for whatever reason, Microsoft thinks that this particular region of France belongs in the heart of Africa. So how do we fix it? Well, there is two ways to fix it. The first way to fix it is to add an additional column and try to add a little bit more information to that state description. So what we could do is we could say Nord, comma, France, and see if that works. So here I've added another column to our customer dimension. And all I'm doing here is I'm creating a column called state and that column is a concatenation of the state province. So in our case, for example, it's going to say California, comma, and then the country name. Let's see if that works any better. Okay, so I made a copy of the top chart. So this is going to be before and this is going to be after. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my state province column that came with the model. And I'm going to replace it with my new column called state and see if anything looks any better. Before I do that, what I want to do is go to data category and make sure that it is marked as state or province to make sure that the mapping 
has that category information to geocode correctly. So now that this is marked as state or province, just the same way as state province in uh, that came in the original model, let's drag that into location and see if that fixes the problem. And as we can see, it did not fix the problem. We see that this Nord France, and now you see that that is right in the description of the state, where before we only had Nord as the state province. Now we have Nord comma France, and for some reason the Geocoding, Bing geocoding still places it right in the heart of Africa. So let's see if we can do a little bit better. So it turns out that the way to fix it is to do the following. If you categorize this new column as state or province, it doesn't seem like it fixes geocoding at all. However, if you categorize it as place, let's see what happens. So I categorize it as, as place and right away you see that this now is gone. Now I have this big bubble here because there is some data in here that's uh, not applicable, so there's some records there that do not have geospatial information. I'm just going to exclude this for now so we don't have to deal with this on our map. So now that Nord is gone from Africa, it took me a little bit of time to find it in France, but here we go, very close to Belgium. There is a, a bubble for Nord France, and I hope that's, uh, that's pretty accurate with respect to where it's supposed to be. Now, is there another way to fix this? There's another way that I found that works. And the other way to do this is what you can do is you can grab the country region in the top. So now let's try to fix the top chart, the original chart. So the way I've been able to fix this stuff is you could take country region, drag it into location, just make sure that it's above state and province, and then drill down. If you do that, then you will see that uh, the data point is no longer in Africa. And if I scroll down and try to look for something close to Belgium, here you go, country region is France, state province is Nord, so we're looking at exactly the same location in both cases. So here we have Nord by, fix this by uh, drilling down, or you could just create a new column with a state column country name, and then categorize it as place, and that seems to be working just as well. And if you look at other bubbles, it seems that my bubbles in the map below look very similar to my bubble bubbles in the map above. So that place categorization seems to be working just fine. Now, there's one more thing that I'd like to point out where this place concept is actually pretty cool. And that is when you're trying to compare things at a different grain uh, geographically. So if some of your data comes at the country level, some of the data comes at a state level, you, you may have some data at a city level, and if you're using this drill down approach, then you're going to be uh, missing an opportunity to show all of your data at the same time in the map. So sometimes if you have that kind of heterogeneous just spatial categorization of your data, then making that place column and then categorizing as a place can help you show different type of grain of data on the same map at the same time. So that's about uh, all I had on this mapping problem. Let me know if you have found a different way to address it. Let me know if you're dealing with the same issues as well. I know that's been pretty annoying feature and pretty annoying problem in this, in this map implementation for a while. I'm hoping that the geocoding that Bing does uh, will get better over time. Hope this was useful and please come back again soon.